more than the Sumatran tiger, much more than the snow leopard, at the turn of the 21st century, the Iberian lynx was the most endangered feline on the planet. Barely a hundred specimens survived in two isolated corners to the south of the Iberian Peninsula. Sooner rather than later, the Iberian lynx would cease to travel the land where it was born as a species and where it had thrived for thousands of years. Sooner rather than later, its destiny was total extinction. But there were those who believed that the Iberian lynx could still be saved. This is Sally, this is Aura. Aura, Sally. Saliega and Aura, two small and mischievous Iberian lynx females, were the protagonists of the beginning of this adventure. Without a doubt, it was with them that the project was set in motion for the reproduction of the Iberian lynx in captivity, where everything was a great unknown. They were chosen for capture because they were the weakest of their litters, born in the wild and made up of three puppies each. In fact, Saliega arrived with a small injury to a leg, from which she soon recovered at the botanical zoo of Jerez where both spent their first months playing games and being attentively cared for. The last hope of the Iberian lynx depended on those two little ones. One year later, Saliega and Aura were moved to the El Athabuche facilities in the Doñana National Park. It had all the necessary means to facilitate the reproduction of the lynx. But those responsible were immersed in doubts because they had never tried something like this with this species. Saliega was the first one to get pregnant. From the screens in the control room, they hopefully monitored the evolution every day, every hour. Until it was time for the delivery. Then something happened that stunned them. Saliega took out all three of her newborns. It was absolutely amazing and exceptional because she did not do this again with her six subsequent litters. As if she were aware of the transcendental significance of that moment. It seemed to them that Saliega wanted to share it with them. She was introducing her puppies to them, the seed of a hopeful future for the Iberian lynx. The first step in the project to recover the Iberian lynx had been to breed a number of specimens in captivity to ensure the survival of the species in the event that those living in the wild became completely extinct. But this was not the longed-for final goal. Scientists, those in charge of the protection of the natural environment, the media or simple nature lovers come together to attend an event as exciting as it is transcendental for biodiversity. The release of an Iberian lynx. Osiris, a young male, takes her first steps towards freedom and his own life adventure. He has everything ahead of him, from a hunting territory to a partner to breed. His collar, equipped with a radio transmitter, will allow to follow him at a distance and to know, for example, if he settles in this environment, 
or prefers to disperse in search of other territories. It is Oriel's turn, a female the same age as Osiris. Watching them begin their lives in freedom and in the ecosystem where they once abounded is the ultimate justification for the Iberian lynx conservation program. But getting one of these lynxes back into nature takes a long, meticulous and complex process. In centres such as Tharta de Granadilla is where it all begins. In Spain, the centres of El Afebuche, La Olivilla and the botanical zoo of Jerez, together with that of Silvers in Portugal, are also dedicated to the captive breeding of the Iberian lynx. They all work in a coordinated way and follow identical protocols, which begin with an in-depth review of the animals that are going to be dedicated to reproduction. The rule at these centres is that animals have as little contact with humans as possible, and only when strictly necessary, in the event of illness or injury, are they captured. Or like now, that this male is reviewed to ensure his suitability as the father of a future generation of Iberian lynx. Veterinarians carry out a thorough check of its physical condition. It's a meticulous task that simultaneously allows them to find out if the lynx suffers any kind of problem that could not be detected through surveillance cameras. They also take the opportunity to take blood and hair samples to learn more about their physiology. Scientists from other national and foreign institutions will work with them coordinating the project, dedicated, for example, to genetic studies of the species. Once they have finished their checkup, the lynx will return to the tranquility of a dark room to recover from the anaesthetic. In the meantime, veterinarians will begin to study the next parent candidate. Lynx that are declared suitable for reproduction are moved to the large enclosures of the centre where they will meet their partners. What happens next can only be witnessed through the fence's surveillance cameras. The encounter between a male and a female in the same enclosure is always a delicate moment. They are solitary and very territorial animals that fiercely defend their space against a stranger, whoever it may be. So before this meeting, both have been in adjoining facilities, but separated by a fence to get acquainted. They are constantly monitored for their reactions until they feel that there are indications that they tolerate each other. Then they are put together in the same space. This is a critical moment because their previous behavior does not guarantee anything. On many occasions, a lynx does not show aggressiveness until it notices the physical presence of the other 
in its own territory. Males and females reach optimum sexual maturity for reproduction at three or four years of age. When they are in freedom, it's the males who devote themselves to looking for possible females to mate with. Fortunately, this mate only has to worry about being accepted by her, something that will not happen until she is ovulated. Then the couple gives in to a real sexual frenzy. For a few days, they will mate an average of 28 times. Some are even more active, as a couple was registered to have done it 80 times in two days. Such tenacity usually has the reward of an almost certain pregnancy. Once pregnant, the female rejects the male, who in freedom would go in search of other partners. After two months of pregnancy, the female gives birth to her cubs. Females usually give birth to between one and four puppies, and even five exceptionally. A birth is always filled with special emotion in breeding centers. Each birth represents a speck of hope for its species and the justification for all the effort made. It is always exciting to see, through the cameras, how attentive mothers are to their newborns. They immediately strive to cleanse them by licking their little bodies. This grooming has proven decisive for how puppies will later understand stressful situations. Both in breeding centers and in the wild, the puppies, who are born deaf and blind, spend their first few weeks hidden in the safety of the burrow where they were born. Later, the mothers in freedom usually change the place where the smaller ones refuge to have a larger, cleaner space, to avoid potential predators or to approach places with more food. Very soon, the puppies are already able to venture out to follow their mother, from whom they do not detach themselves as they continue to depend on their protection and their milk. Puppies live a happy time in which they only worry about eating, discovering the world and playing, especially playing. Always watched by their mother, play is essential both for their healthy growth and for learning to be great predators. However, what today are innocent games, in a few weeks will become something much more dangerous that can end the life of one of these puppies. While the newcomers discover their home, in another compound, the team must attend to an emergency. Through the cameras, they have discovered that a lynx shows obvious signs of having a physical problem. Always thinking about which is the best option to minimize interfering with them and any contact with humans, veterinarians choose to assist them in their own space. 
With the same objective in mind, they prepare in advance everything they require to be fast and effective. First with tranquilizer darts, with which they will be sedated before proceeding to their examination. They may be short of strength, but that does not make it any easier to reach them with their blowpipe loaded with the narcotic dart. In addition to discovering and treating the problem that was affecting it, the veterinarians take the opportunity to perform a thorough examination, in addition to taking samples that contribute to the scientific studies that are being carried out. At the different Iberian lynx breeding centers, they know that they must always be ready to face the unexpected. Through the surveillance camera placed in the farrowing tube, they observe an anomalous behavior of Brisa. She is a first-time mother who does not seem to know or want to take care of her puppy. Minute by minute from the control room, her behavior and that of her puppy which grows increasingly weak and helpless, is monitored and recorded. Clearly, if they do not intervene, he will end up dying. So they decide to try something that has never been tried before at Iberian lynx breeding centers. The first thing is to check the puppy's condition and treat it to prevent it from weakening further and regain strength to face this new adventure. Once stabilized, the puppy is transferred to another center. He comes in the hope of getting a new mother. From now on, everything is a mystery. For the first time, we were going to try for an Iberian lynx female with puppies to adopt another one that was not of her own litter. The chosen one was Castanuela, who gave birth only two days ago. Castanuela turns out to be a wonderful and generous mother who does not hesitate to adopt the newcomer, taking him with the others who are going to be his new siblings. The abandoned puppy finally has a new family to grow up in safely, at least until he is two months old. Then perhaps one of his new brothers will become his worst enemy. Watching puppies grow up amidst ever bolder games and explorations of their territory is always a joy. But they're always aware that it will be ephemeral. It is not yet clear why, but when the puppies are close to two months old, violent fights begin to take place among siblings. Mothers intervene forcefully to separate them and prevent them from getting hurt. But they do not always make it, 
as they're looking for food or in a remote place, especially when they are free. Then these brawls can end up with the death of one of the puppies. Experts have understood that these fights are part of the natural development of the Iberian lynx. So they let them and their mothers solve it themselves, which usually happens in a couple of days. Intervention only takes place if the life of one of them is in obvious danger. Another native of the Iberian Peninsula is essential for the survival of the lynx. It is the common rabbit. The lynx have specialized in their hunting to such an extent that they have made it their majority, if not exclusive, prey. A lynx needs a rabbit a day to subsist, and getting it was not difficult for thousands of years. The rabbit is a prolific animal that is perfectly integrated into the ecosystem where it originated and it is a key part of its trophic chain. But all this changed dramatically in the mid-20th century. The Iberian Lynx Recovery Project, which has the strong support of the European Union, was clear from the very beginning that captive breeding was only a first step. The ultimate goal of all the effort was to culminate in the reintroduction of the species into their natural environment. And for a lynx to survive in freedom, it needs one thing above all, an abundance of rabbits. Thus, parallel to captive breeding, the recovery of this small mammal began in the environments where the lynx would later be released. An essential piece of this work is the construction of artificial warrens. These are structures that rabbits will find very similar to the labyrinthine burrows they build up to shelter themselves and their offspring. In addition to thousands of warrens, breeding fences have been built, specimens have been released, and sanitary controls and field work have been carried out to favor their breeding, all in order to make the rabbit abundant here again. The natural balance between the Iberian lynx and the rabbit was tragically broken by human action in the mid-20th century. In 1952, Dr. Armand de Lille inoculated the myxomatosis virus into two of the rabbits ravaging his farm in northern France. This was the beginning of the catastrophe. Within a few years, the disease spread throughout Western Europe as a lethal and uncontrollable plague that decimated rabbit populations. For the Iberian lynx, it meant a death sentence and was reaffirmed when, in the 1980s, another lethal disease for rabbits arose in the Iberian Peninsula, the hemorrhagic virus. Chased by man and without his favorite prey, the Iberian lynx headed for total extinction. In the first encounters between young lynxes and rabbits, there is more curiosity than hunting instinct. It is like if they were running into a new elusive playmate rather than a prey. With no fixed timetable or repetitive guidelines, in order to avoid getting used to an easy meal and losing their hunting instinct, those in charge introduce rabbits into the lynx enclosures through a network of tunnels. To the cameras, they observe with great attention the behavior of the younger ones. To see who hunts and who does not, if they steal their prey or have their prey stolen from them, if they are decisive or elusive, or which hierarchical place they occupy in the litter. Our fundamental data at the time of evaluating if they are ready for being returned to nature. 
Once again in their young life, their mother's example is essential in the learning of puppies. From their mother, they learn the secrets of stalking, the Iberian lynx's favorite technique for hunting. They watch her approach cautiously until the unsuspecting rabbit is within reach in a few leaps. Then she throws herself at him, catching it by the neck. Before they earn their freedom and put into practice what they have learned with their mothers, Lynx, born in centers, must go through the operating theater. Of course, they will undergo a thorough examination of their condition, but that is not the sole purpose of the intervention. It all starts with the administration of a sedative that allows professionals to effectively handle the lynx, minimizing as much as possible the time spent in the operating room. Once the specimen is completely asleep, the different preset tasks are started in parallel. While its general physical condition is being checked and various samples are being taken, it will be fitted with a collar equipped with a radio transmitter, which is the other reason why the lynx was brought here today. It is adjusted to its neck, making sure that it adapts perfectly to its anatomy comfortably, and its operation is tested. There will be still some time before it is released, which will serve to get the lynx used to its new companion, and also to confirm that it is sending the signal correctly. These devices are proving to be an extraordinary tool for professionals working on the preservation of the Iberian lynx. It enables environmental agents and project technicians to obtain a large amount of information about the lynx and freedom without having to approach them. This preserves the need to prevent human contact with animals, while at the same time obtaining data of great interest to improve the protocols for their reintroduction into the natural environment. Through antennas, the technicians can delimit the extension of their territories, know their roaming habits, whether they abandon it or enter areas dominated by others, which lynxes join in times of heat, or if the mothers have moved their litter. And also, if they need to intervene, because a signal has been emitting for some time from the same place, which may mean that whoever is carrying the radio transmitter has a problem. Waves enable the Iberian lynx to have someone to watch over them as they reoccupy the land of their ancestors. Checking that the liberated lynx are adapting well and have found their own territory with shelter and food is always a cause for joy. But nothing is comparable to discovering that they have created a new life for themselves in freedom.
to observe that a female who was born in captivity has had offspring and freedom gives meaning to everything that has been done and is an incentive to continue. Watching them grow up with her, learning everything they will need when they become adults and embark on the adventure of taking their own kingdom is a confirmation that they are on the right track. And the data corroborate this. After the first 15 years of the project, over 500 lynxes live now in different areas of southern Spain and Portugal. Lynx often stay in a territory as long as there are enough rabbits or provided that they don't feel threatened. They go through it, mark it and defend it every day. It is the females that show this territorial attachment most intensely. In fact, it is not uncommon for daughters and even granddaughters to remain in territories bordering on that of their predecessor and even to share it. Perhaps to compensate for this behavior from a genetic point of view, it's the males that tend to disperse the most. But very few, as far as is known, have brought this adventurous spirit to where the Khan and Kentaro brothers did. Released in the center of the Iberian Peninsula, both took opposite directions, but motivated by the same passion, traveling. Khan made his way to the southwest of Portugal, his place of origin, as he had been born in the center of Silvers. His journey ended in the Algarve, settling in an area where there were already other links. Quintaro chose the north and then returned to the west. We can only imagine the thousand adventures that both adventurers had to circumvent in their trips of years and thousands of kilometers. But Kentaro's journey had no happy ending like his brother's. He was run over. Undoubtedly, roads and railways are one of the greatest dangers faced by Iberian lynx. In fact, this is the leading cause of unnatural death. In a five-year period, 98 lynx were killed by a hit and run. To prevent them, various initiatives are being carried out, such as identifying black spots to give them warning signs or fencing them off. In addition to tracking the specimens using radio transmitter collars, another tool that has proved extremely useful for collecting data on the life of lynx and freedom is photo trapping cameras. Their design, location and operation ensure that they do not disturb the lynx at all. This invisibility allows what they capture to have an enormous documentary value. They enable the project professionals to reliably check the physical condition of the specimens and whether it is appropriate to intervene in the event of a health problem. Which couples have been formed? How many puppies a female has had and how they are growing? Or whether a foreign lynx has arrived in the territory? Their memory treasures moments of Lynx's pure life and freedom.
The recovery of the Iberian lynx would not have been possible and would not have had the success it is having without the collaboration of landowners, cattle breeders and farmers. People who value being an active part of this objective, facilitating access to their estates for project professionals, or even offering a space on their property where to release lynx. They have understood that returning the Iberian lynx to its ecosystem is a good thing for everyone. And they are the example that only through broad social involvement will it be possible for the Iberian lynx to return to nature to stay. During their routine field trips, technicians dedicate themselves to various tasks. One of them is the location and sampling of the latrines that the lynx create. Their location is geographically fixed, as the lynx use their depositions as a means to delimit their territory and warn any outsider who's entered their property. But they also provide a great deal of information of scientific interest from their diet to their state of health, or if they are in heat, for example. Photo trapping cameras are also being very useful in corroborating the good development of a new phase of the Iberian Lynx recovery program natural corridors. Various infrastructures are being built to enable Iberian lynx and also other animals to cross the dangerous border of the road network. This also enables communication paths between territories, which is essential to avoid inbreeding between the populations of Iberian lynx in freedom. Lynxes can now obey their travelling spirit away from human dangers and ensure healthy and strong future generations. But new threats may come at the most unexpected time. Go to the centre, those of you who can. The message that the workers of El Athabucha received on the 25th of June 2017 alerted them to the seriousness of the situation. The night before, a forest fire had broken out about 25 kilometres from the centre, but its voracity was approaching it very quickly, fed by the atmospheric conditions conducive to its advance against which little could the forest firefighting brigades do. The nightmare that all the workers at the centres had once imagined was becoming a tragic reality. They would have to evacuate the breeding centre. Of course they had an evacuation plan designed and tested in drills, but it takes time to catch the animals and ensure the safety of the workers. And time is what they no longer had. A change in the wind direction was leading the incandescent beast towards them very quickly.
With a darkened sky and an air that was unbreathable due to the smoke and ashes that fell on the centre, they threw themselves into the very difficult task of capturing the 27 lynx. Under normal conditions, this is already difficult to achieve, but now the lynx, being nervous and very frightened, it was going to be even more so. Then came the evacuation order. The fire was very close and we had to evacuate the centre now. decided to open all the doors and thus offer an opportunity for the lynx that had not been captured to save themselves. Fortune and the work of professionals managed to keep the fire from pushing any further. The El Athabuche Centre was saved. When an Iberian lynx returns to freedom, everything makes sense. The hard and even dramatic moments experienced, the daily effort, the sleeplessness and doubts now belong to the past, such as their life in captivity. Every year, new generations of Iberian lynx enter the former world that belonged to their species for many thousand years. Not only does their reoccupation of this ecosystem protect their species from extinction, it also helps to protect their habitat, the Mediterranean forest, and many other animal species that share it. As in fact is happening with the rabbit or the Iberian imperial eagle, which are also endangered species. Each of these released lynxes carries with them the promise of new lives. Puppies who will no longer know of any existence other than the one they will make for themselves in freedom. Lynxes who still owe their lives to Saliega, the eve of their species. Somehow all of them are Saliega's lineage because it is because of her as a little cub, which then became an excellent mother, that the journey began to save them from extinction. The botanical zoo of Jerez, Saliega's first home among humans, continues to carry out a meritorious educational and research work. 
It also carries out work on breeding and recovery of different species. In addition to Iberian lynx, here we work with different endangered species to facilitate their breeding and reintroduction into their natural environment. Primates, felines or birds such as the Egyptian vulture or the hermit ibis are finding an opportunity here. Saliega is back with them. After breeding seven litters, Saliega has earned a quiet retirement in what was her home to spend her last years. But she continues to collaborate with the Iberian Lynx Recovery Project. Those who visit now learn to know and appreciate how important it is to protect this unique feline and what Saliega has meant for her offspring and for the offspring of her offspring already live in freedom in their ancestral territories. <laughs>